So I guess my question for you is twofold. Um, if you can just dig a little bit more into clarifying your assessment of inventory right now to address the people who say, wait a second, Melody, we've been hearing for years, we have too little, you're saying we have too much. Uh, and then secondly, um, I mean, shouldn't the laws of supply and demand come in place here where you okay, you got a lot of units apparently that have been built but are sitting empty and aren't selling. You have a lot of people who want to buy but can't afford. Sounds like price adjustment should, should be what solves that problem. Absolutely. But everybody's in the extend and pretend, you know, I think that, so what I feel like we're writing on right now is a wave of narrative and, and what's happening. And, you know, I don't want to come out and say people are, are doing wrong things, but I will say that there's vested interest out there. Right. And so having a spec community and not filing the certificate of occupancy or not listing it for sale you know, then it doesn't really exist, right? And and that's what I'm starting to see on the road. Meaning, um, if a, if a home sells for a lower price, but they never submit the certificate of occupancy, nobody really knows. Or if they just hold it off the market completely, and they okay. don't because and so there's and I think one of the hardest things about all of this is there's not one scenario. You know, a lot of people look back and say subprime caused the last crisis. That's that's not accurate. It was you know it was the kindling that started the fire, but the real foreclosure crisis came to your prime borrowers after you know uh, credit quality degraded due to affordability issues and the feds written a ton of papers on this you know that i won't make that we won't go there right now but but honestly these spec homes i i've, I've started to realize this is so typically what you do is you build custom like someone comes and says hey i want to build a house and maybe you choose a model and then you write a contract and you build it but these spec homes that were being built for built to rent and um and for short-term rental there weren't contracts and so these builders don't like if they never file that certificate of occupancy it's almost like they don't exist or they exist if you've seen that permit data where it shows kind of starts and completions and then the pig and the snake which mm -hmm. is the all in progress <laughs> well i think it's that's where they all are except i actually believe that probably some of those permits weren't even filed. There's some lawsuits out there right now uh, about that. Um, but I, I think they exist, Adam, but we don't know about it. Like when I was in Round Rock, Texas, for instance, th that's a suburb of Austin and, and got a lot of interest because Amazon was going to build a warehouse there. They canceled those plans. But I would I would drive a mile down the road and there would be a new build site, a new build site, a new build site, you take a right, another one and another one. And then I would sit down with people while in Austin, you know, people that work in the hotel, wherever, and I talk to them and, and they say, no, those are all sold. I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> you know, you go to the website, they're not all sold. We heard back in the, um, back earlier in the year, it, it was a Twitter user named Raleigh Fams. And he said kind of what was happening is they, as he worked as uh, in new, in, in new home sales is that they would just find whoever they could write a contract because that's all that you have to do. And, and those contracts mean nothing. That's not underwriting. That's just write a contract, write a contract, make it look like you sold it. It goes on as sold on the lot. Um, and then, you know, it doesn't matter if they can qualify because we just have to make our numbers each month. And that's kind of, and again, this was an anonymous account. I'm still in touch with him. He's at a major national home builder right now. Um, and the other thing that he told me that they do, and I've also had this confirmed with other realtors and things like that, is they'll put different color stickers on the home saying sold, but in reality, they know green means sold and red means that it's not really sold. And, and they'll do things what's called salting the lots. They'll make it look like people are actually, those homes have sold. One thing I saw in Austin that they did so firstly, you always have the construction people and the people working in the office will kind of drive in and they'll park in the house, like at each of the houses to make like, and they'll pull the garbage cans down, like the, the recycling can and the garbage can to make it look like someone lives there. But you typically could tell because there'd be a light on. And this was another thing that people told me is like, the, there's always some way to distinguish which ones are sold and which ones aren't. Now, again, 
who's at fault here? I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, this, some people would just say, this is, it's just a marketing gimmick, right? Um, it, but it, it all adds up. And then I kind of go back to technology systems. So technology and mortgage and, and at these builder sites is abysmal. Like it is, it's terrible. Um, it's maybe Excel spreadsheets where people type things in. And so half the time you, you don't know what's actually going up to corporate, right? Like, and, and on, so I think that there's a combination of people that have no idea what they're doing, filling out these sheets. And then there's people that probably know what they're doing. That's filled, because, you know, it's when your paycheck depends on it, it's important to take, you know, the rosiest view of everything. Right. And so I'm, I'm not saying people are doing thing, anything wrong, but when I, I will tell you that I came back completely mystified how anyone could say that there was an inventory shortage and a reporter from a very large publication called me and said, we're going to do this story. And we were working on it. And we were talking to the builders. We were talking to a technology platform out there that said they had every new build on their platform. But I called them from Austin and I said, wait a minute. All right, let's talk about Sweetwater. What about that? Oh yeah. Well, okay. What about out in Maynard? Oh yeah. Yeah. So basically they they started the conversation saying every single one of those homes are going to be occupied but every time i brought up one of these subdivisions that i had seen that by the way sweetwater out in austin texas i mean these aren't 400,000 these are over 600 to a million and more and they just kept building them up in the hills um they they would admit that was an issue and so it's like almost it, it, I think that when we look at things in aggregate, it's very difficult um, to really see what's happening below. And and I pressed them specifically about local private builders, and I got no answer. So I did a lot of, as I was out there trying to call people in my industry, trying to understand what was I missing, you know? And, and honestly, what I came or what I concluded was I'm not missing anything. <laughs> we are missing a ton just by things like poor technology, delays due to labor shortages and things like that. And I think we're all going to be hit like a Mack truck when this stuff does start making its way uh, to, to the listing sites because of the credit crunch, liquidity shortages, et cetera. Um, and, and I think we're already starting to see that. So. Okay. So we've got, um, I'm going to say this politely, right? We've got a ton of dust in the air that's making it really hard to assess the true nature of what's going on in the housing market. Right. Um, you know, there may be some fraud hidden in that dust. I know that you're not right. necessarily going there yet, but I have the sense reading from what you're saying wouldn't entirely shock you. 